Welcome back to the Art of Math. Today we're going to go over messing around with the equal sign. Equality is a spectrum. So I want to just convey that there's a lot more than appears for the equal sign. And that's my magic trick and that's why I'm not a magician. Alright, so let's go over what you usually think of in terms of the equal sign. So there's, here's a spectrum, here's a scale. So here's our equal sign and normally you'll have equations such as x plus y equals 4. So that's well and good. Then on the sort of bottom end we'll have inequality. So if we want to loosen up that constraint we'll say let's say x plus y is less than or equal to 4. It doesn't have to be exactly 4 but 4 is just a bound. We can't exceed 4. But there's a lot of stuff in between so we can actually make that equality even stricter or a little more loose. So let's go over like what are our other options. And the point of this is not to teach you a specific skill, it's to kind of do two things. To show you there's a lot of creativity going on and mathematicians are sort of devious fellows and fellowettes. And they're just a, like whatever your imagination is, there's probably something to sort of please everybody in there to explore stuff. So let's see. Let's take an equality and make it even stricter. So let's take this x times y equals 4. And now we're going to look for integer solutions only. So that's x equals 1, y equals 4, and I've listed the four pairs over here. I don't know why that's gone. All right. And that's called the study of di Diophantine equations after the Greek Diophantus, which just means that the solutions can only be integers. So what does this mean? We've taken an equality, but we're adding extra conditions to the variables. We're saying we don't just want any x and y we only want certain x and y. So notice that's stricter than regular equality where you could pick any x and y you want. So that's a way of making it stricter. Now I, over here you can also have dummy variables. So x and y don't have to be integers. They could be dummy variables which just means they take on the value 0 or 1. So why might you want that? Well this might indicate, well one might indicate that something is present and a 0 might mean it's absent or not there. All right, so this is just to show you guys what else is out there. So yes, there actually is something called a dummy variable. Now, all the way here we have inequalities, right? Less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. But in here, this is kind of an interesting region. What if we want this to be true, but only some of the time? Or we're okay with it being true some of the time? Well, that's probability. Let's say we want x plus y to equal 4 at least 80% of the time. So that's probability and we can discuss statistics as well in there. It's like what's the likelihood that if we do something and something that that will be true. Now in here this is optimization and I'm not covering everything. I'm just showing you guys a few things that are out there. So you have something called slack variables. So we have the equality and the inequality and you might think hey is there a way to kind of is there something in between and that's a little bit about what slack variables is. So it means exactly what it sounds like. It gives us a little bit of slack. So let's take this inequality and now we're just going to add an S. And you may think, wait, these don't look the same. However, we're going to require that this new slack variable called S is greater than or equal to zero. So let's say X plus Y is five, then S would have to be negative one, but we said it has to be greater than or equal to zero. So that together these are the same as that. So why might, why do we care? Why do we, would we want to do that? Well, notice we've taken an inequality and turned it into an equality and the only inequality is this little easy constraint. So if you remember from systems of equations prior where we use substitution, combination, solving these might be a lot simpler than solving these. So I'll just leave it kind of at that. And if you want to study this more, this appears, if you follow this convoluted path, in something called the simplex method, which allows you to solve a ton of these, where you're optimizing, you're trying to maximize or minimize something, and then you're, you have some constraints. That's under an area of math called linear, or math optimization, doesn't really matter, linear programming, and that itself is under a field called operations research, which grew, really got popular around World War II. So if you want to study this further, I'm just giving you guys some of the terms you can read about that more. Another thing is regularizers or penalties. So imagine you have some data points, these little black dots or data points, and we want to fit our 
the closest line to these data points. So that's this green line. That seems pretty sensible, right? So we wouldn't put the, the line over here. It would be somewhere over here. But now let's say our data is a little bit weirder. So let's say it sort of follows this like wave pattern. But then one of our data points is over there. So most of our data follows this nice pattern. But if we want to fit all our data as closely as we can, we might really deviate out of our way just to fit that one data point. And so what regularizers and penalties do, I'm not going to go and write it up algebraically, but basically instead of directly minimizing or maximizing, we're going to give ourselves a little penalty. We're saying we don't want to fit the data so perfectly that it messes up our model. So in other words, we have this green line, but we could also just say, just literally connect the dots. If we connect the dots, we haven't learned too much because we haven't extracted this nice relationship. So the penalties or these regularizers we, are these little like terms we can add to our optimizations to prevent us from overfitting. So overfitting means just fit, like literally connecting the dots. You want to say, hey, I, I'm fine with having a little more error in my model, but I want to learn something useful. So in other words, I don't want my model to be too complex. So notice if we say, hey, we're, it's okay, we're not really going to fit this point very well, but then we're going to learn this nice relationship because if you want to go through that point, then maybe you need a much more complex model. So there's a trade-off between fitting your data perfectly and having a really simple model. Sometimes too simple is oversimplified, and sometimes if you fit all the data, then it's so complex that you haven't learned anything. So for example, let's take rainy days and umbrellas. So if every, if like 99% of the days that it rains, you see a lot of umbrellas outside and I ask you, what can you, ex what can you extract from that? What can you learn from that? And you say, well, all that means is 99% of the time it rains, there are umbrellas outside. You haven't really figured out much. You, you just literally rehashed what I've just told you. So we want to say, okay, maybe it's only 99% of the time, but we're going to predict that rains sort of are predictive of people having umbrellas almost all the time, even though technically it's only 99% of the time. So the point is, I'm just throwing this out. Now, this stuff is part of a really popular area now, neural nets, neural networks, which are part of machine learning, which is part of artificial intelligence. So all these software companies, Google, Facebook, all the stuff, the brain, I'll just leave it at that. So neural networks model both machine intelligence and the human brain. So if you're interested in some of this stuff, I'm not doing this as a definitive guy to explain this, just showing you that there's a lot more than meets the eye between a simple equals, which is a lot of what we've been doing in algebra, and then inequalities. So the next few videos we'll have some stuff on inequalities, but I encourage you guys to explore some of these other stuff, some of these other things on your own that we may not get to as much in the series. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.